Today, we're going to talk about hypothesis tests for a population mean. So the notation is, for population mean, is called a mu. Mu sub zero is a number in H sub zero, the null hypothesis. This is where we have the equality for the claim. N is the sample size. X bar is a sample mean, and S is a sample standard deviation. Now, there are four requirements. The sample obtained must be a simple random sampling or data from a randomized experiment. The population is normally distributed on the sample, or the sample size is large, N is greater than or equal to 30, and there are no outliers. Sample sizes are independent. Sample values are independent, and the sample size is no more than 5% of the population. So compared to the population, we have a small sample. So we can do the test by two ways, either using critical values, which come up from a t-chart with n minus 1 degrees of freedom, or we can use the test statistic and the p-value, which come from the calculator. And that is what we are going to work on. Notice your calculator keystrokes are stat, test, number two, t-test. So let's look at some examples. All right, so I would like us to read the problem and write down some data that's not exactly asked for, but it'll help us as we work through this. According to the American Community Survey, the mean travel time to call in work to in Collin County in 2013 was 27.5 minutes. The Department of Transportation reprogrammed all the traffic lights in Collin County in an, in an attempt to reduce travel time. To determine if there's evidence that travel time has decreased as a result of the reprogramming, the Department of Transportation obtains a random sample of 2,500 commuters records their travel time to work and finds a sample mean of 27.2 and a st st sample standard deviation of 8.5. Does this result suggest that the travel time has decreased at alpha equal 0.05? So I'm going to go ahead and fill in my alpha 0.05. That's one piece of information we need to know. We need to know n, x bar, and s. n is your sample size, 2,500. X bar is your sample mean, 27.2. Standard deviation is 8.5. Your null hypothesis is mu is equal to 27.5. Decrease implies less than. Mu is less than 27.5. So on a picture, what we're talking about is less than. So our rejection area is to the left. Using a calculator we get that p is equal to 0 0.039. So the question is, is p less than alpha? If yes, we reject. If no, we do not reject. Is 0 0.039 less than 0 0.05? Yes, so we will reject HO. So what is our conclusion? There is sufficient evidence. to support the claim that the travel time to work in Collin County has decreased. Number two, in 2002, the mean age of an inmate on death row was 40.7 years, according to the U.S. Department of Justice. A sociologist wonders whether the mean age of death row inmates has changed. 
Now, has changed is different. So when you say has changed, that means not equal to. As she randomly selects 32 death row inmates and finds that their mean age is 38.9 with a standard deviation of 9.6. Sociologists claim using alpha equal to 0 0.05. So n is equal to... Thirty-two. The sample mean, thirty-eight point nine. The sample standard deviation is nine point six. So again, mu is equal to forty point seven. Mu is not equal to forty point seven. Alpha is equal to point oh five. Now, the test statistic is from the calculator, and so is the p-value. So those two p information comes from the calculator. So your test statistic is negative 1.06. Your picture for not equal to is a two-tail. P is equal to 0 0.2970. The question is 0 0.2970 less than alpha. No. So we do not reject. There is not sufficient evidence. To support the claim. That. The mean age of death row inmates has changed. So we can say that the mean age has changed. Or we can say is different. So we're testing whether or not the average age of inmates on death row has changed from 2013. And based on our sample that we've chosen with 32... The answer is no. Okay, next example. Michael Sullivan, the son of the author of our textbook, decided to enroll in a reading course that allegedly increases reading speed. Prior to estimating to enrolling in the class, Michael did read 198 words per minute. Following data represent the words per minute for 10 different reading pa passages. So n is 10 at, that he read after taking the course. The reading speed is normally distributed. Remember, that's one of the conditions we need to have in order to use this test. And there are no outliers. So mu, okay, let's clean that up a little bit there. So the mean is equal to 198. So if it increases, the mean is greater than 198. Alpha is 0.10. Okay, so again, using our calculator, this would be data. When I give you a list of points, you get 56.52. Where is greater than? That's a right tail. Alpha is equal to 4.23. Now be careful because there's a E negative 13. That's 10 to the negative 13. Scientific notation, which is approximately zero. Okay, so why is that? Well, if I write that number that's in scientific notation as a numerical value, you have this. Okay, and that's basically zero. So is 0 less than 0.10? Absolutely, we will reject HO. There is sufficient evidence to support the claim that Well, we could say the class is effective, but better said that the course is 
increases reading speed and comprehension. Okay. Now, hopefully you're noticing that we're saying these the same way to start out with. And then it what changes each time is going to be the claim. So it's, there either is sufficient evidence, which is a reject, or there's not sufficient evidence, which is a do not reject. All right, so let's look at, please, our last example, which is going to be different because this will be a T interval. Consumer reports indicate the mean acceleration for the Dodge Intrepid was 10.2 seconds. In most tests of this type, regular unleaded gasoline is used. Suppose that the 41 such tests were given, so we know N is 41. Using unleaded premium gasoline. Sample mean acceleration is 9.7. Standard deviation is 2.1. Does this indicate that the premium gas tends to reduce the average acceleration time? So here you have mu is equal to 10.2. Mu is less than 10.2. Construct a 95% confidence interval. So your confidence level is 0.95. And again, if you guys remember, this is a T interval, which is found on the calculator by going stat, arrow to test, and then go to number 8. T interval. The lower bound is 9.0372. The upper bound is 10.363. Okay, now how do we know? Well, the question is, is 10.2 in the interval? And the answer is yes. So we do not reject. Okay, I said don't. Let's say do not. Okay, now if I want to confirm on my calculator, I could actually find the p value. So if I wanted to do a t test here, I'm going to make calculator stat test number two is your t test. That's what we've been doing. Mu naught is 10.2. Uh, X bar is 9.7. It's 2.1 sample standard deviation. N is 41. Uh, we are doing a less than test. And the calculator gives us a p-value of 0 0.0676, which is obviously not smaller than the 0 0.05, so it's do not reject. You can just confirm using the p-value. We can also find the t-score, and my calculator will do or define for me an inverse T. So if I go second VARS and I do inverse T, my area is, let's see, do we know our area? Well, it might be a little bit easier to read our table here. So let me pull up my column formula chart here. 
And in case you're interested, the um, T value chart is on the last page. Actually, it is not on my chart here. All right, so let's see. All right, so we may not be able to do that, but the test itself using the p-value will confirm that. Okay, so again, because I did not get out the t-table to you, I thought it was on my formula chart. It is not. I will have to rectify that. Um, we are good. So we're going to use our p compared to alpha. If you have any questions, let me know, and have a great day.